Uh, my name is Lynette Reed, and I'm going to. I'm in the Department of Bioethics in the Faculty of Medicine here at Dalhousie, and I'm going to talk you through the concept map that expresses the educational outcomes for Dalhousie's MD program, Dalhousie's renewed MD program. Uh, it has a history, so there we were in September of 2009, really beginning to design a whole new curriculum, which we've put together over the course of this year. And we wanted to start with a lot of medical educators. We gathered 100 people, medical educators, students, community members, interprofessional colleagues, stakeholders from the health districts. We all came together and spent a day in a hotel in Halifax here, really thinking over some of the major documents that are out there that say what are the needs for the present and the future in the physician workforce, what do we, what of all the complex things that physicians do, what are the fundamental knowledge, skills, and attitudes that need to come together in order for students to achieve what they need to achieve at the outset of their careers so that they're ready to meet the challenges of the future. So we spent a day brainstorming, we spent a day writing on sticky notes, we spent a day clustering, and then a small group spent several months poring over some of those national and international documents, poring over the results of the retreat, processing it all, trying to come to our own vision. What we really wanted to do in that process was to get inside the CanMeds flower. So the CanMeds flower with these six competencies and the seventh medical expert role, it expresses where people are in practice, say the end of residency program and in practice. We wanted to say in the heart of that flower, as students get to the point of being in practice, what's the process that they go through? And here's the diagram that we started to come up with about halfway through last year inside the CanMeds flower. We took that diagram, I'm going to explain the components of that diagram in a moment, but we took that diagram and we discussed it with students, we discussed it with members of the community across the Atlantic provinces, the maritime provinces, and it was refined into this diagram that you see here. Okay, so we started with, we wanted to simplify things a little bit from CanMed, so we came down to four professional roles. This is the outside of the square. This is what students are coming to achieve in these four years, to begin to be community contributors, professionals, lifelong learners, and skilled clinicians. And then we were asking ourselves, what are the knowledge, skills, and attitudes that they're putting together in their undergraduate time in order to get there? And so what you have around the inside border of the sphere, of the square, are the attitudinal words. So socially responsible, ethical, innovative, curious, conscientious, reflective, compassionate, collegial. So those attitudinal words are clustered there. And then this next sort of band around the middle, these are the skill words, they're cross-cutting skills. So some words that in CanMeds are entire roles, as we brainstormed it and discussed it through at that retreat, we thought, you know, physicians are communicators in all these roles, they're advocates in all these roles, they're critical thinkers and problem solvers in all these roles, they're collaborating in all these roles. So we wanted to capture much more that cross-cutting quality of these skills, and we then put them on the circle, uh, heading all the way around the square. Of course, the patient at the center was an essential graphical element of this diagram, expressing the patient-centered case-based curriculum that we've developed. And then these are the sciences or the broad areas of the sciences fundamental to the practice of medicine and fundamental to how we know the patient and to where the patient lives. So you've got the patient understood as a biomedical organism on that individual level, understood through the human sciences. People say, why human sciences? Well, we want to say not just psychological sciences or psychosocial. Human sciences is a bit broader. It encompasses our strength in the humanities. So the humanities, psychosocial sciences, the social sciences at the, at the group level, and the epidemiological sciences, again, at the group level. So we've got the sort of more biomedical on the right, the more psychosocial, humanistic, ethical on the left, and the more individual on the bottom, and the more group on the top in those sciences that are the ways that we know the patient and the ways that describe the world that the patient lives in. 
as well. So those are the three different layers, really, four different layers, the five, let's say five, the um, professional roles, the attitudes, the skills, the knowledge base, and the patient at the center expressed in the diagram. Okay, so the diagram doesn't stand alone. We wanted a diagram because we really wanted a quick and effective way to communicate the gist of the whole thing to the thousands of people, really, that are involved in medical education. But the diagram is really shorthand for the actual verbal expression of the educational outcomes. So if you visit this website, you'll see the educational outcomes that the entire program is mapped to. So all of our educational activities, all of our assessments, they're tied somewhere to actual specific worded objectives around each of these roles. Very important to see that the diagram has a context. It refers to these actual outcomes, and these actual outcomes are, are what we're getting our students to and what we'll be assessing them on.